Lions TV, this is your weekly roundup show, fresh off the back of me stopping sulking about the Euros. It is time to crack on with what matters most, and that is, of course, domestic football. There's not been any Den Dailies out recently, and that's because, in part, Gary Rowett did the majority of his transfer dealings before the squad went to pre-season training camp in Scotland. There could be more news coming, but before we move on to that, let's move on to the aforementioned training camp in Scotland. So the squad were up there for a round, I think it's Wednesday till Saturday that was up there last week. And as I said before in previous shows, love the way that Rowett's got it done early and took everyone with him. As I say, pre-season, it's a long old slog. I think the transfer deadline is actually second week of the season, if I'm not mistaken. But I love the way he's got it done early and took everyone up there for not only a little bit of gelling together, but a little bit of team bonding. They played one game up there. It was against Motherwell. Motherwell, yes, yeah, she's fine, thanks. She's just out there, actually. Um, Two goals to nil, Millwall won, apparently absolute, we was class above, and Motherwell, of course, Scottish football kicks off this weekend, I believe, so they're a lot more further advanced than down the line. We did win the game by two goals to nil, with Ben Thompson and Matt Smith getting the goals. In that friendly, and moving on to another friendly, which was played yesterday, behind closed doors against Watford at Watford's training ground. I think that's Colney, London Colney, which used to be Arsenal's old training ground back in the 90s. Um... Don't know why I told you that completely worthless facts on a Mill YouTube channel, but I've done it. Three goals to two we lost yesterday against a strong Watford side. It was one nil down. Come back in the second half. Two goals in quick succession from Matt Smith and Matt Mount and Murray Wallace. But unfortunately, eventually, we did lose the game by three goals to two. If you want to see what the team sheets were, because uh, at Motherwell and at Watford yesterday, we played two different teams. One first half 11, one second half 11. The team sheets from yesterday are on our Instagram page. You're going to put it up there for a change. There. That's it there. Uh, yeah, if you want to have a look on our Instagram page, we're on the way to 10K on that page as well. So please give us a follow. And of course, always subscribe to the channel. But I'll leave that to the end. Three players missing from the Motherwell game and the Watford game yesterday. People asking questions. Isaac Alafe, first up, of course, the young talent on loan last season at Sutton, helping him win promotion to the Football League for the first time in their history. Tanto is injured. He's growing up in Scotland and will be unavailable for two to three weeks. The other player missing, Tom Bradshaw. I'm hearing that is also a slight niggle. And in midfield, Ryan Leonard was the only other first team squad member missing. Uh, he, of course, is on a long way back. Oh, following a long-term ankle injury, I think it was. Um, and I'm hearing he's going to be back in training next week in full with the rest of the squad. So two games, one win, one loss. You can't read too much into it for now. There is, of course, friendlies coming up later on the line against Gillingham, against Ipswich which I believe fans can go to and I'm hearing that there is also a little bit of an exclusive behind closed doors friendlies against Barnet, Fulham and um, Bournemouth if I'm not mistaken I did hear through the Great Vine or is it the Grape Vine? I always get them two mixed up so that's the first team fixture roundup. Going back to a, an old story, which I've covered on the Den Daily. If you haven't checked it out already, check it out. Abdul Abdul Malik. This one's blown up for a player that has never been near our first team. And I think, if I'm honest now, I think he's coming back to me. So I'll say it. A little bit overrated. He got offered a one-year contract from the club. He, well, apparently has turned it down by the looks of it because he went on trial at Portsmouth. After two weeks on trial at Portsmouth, Danny Cowley has come out and said... He didn't do enough to impress us. So now Abdul Malik is a little bit in the wilderness, a little bit out in the cold. And it's a strange situation because I think as, as a youngster a long, long time ago, I might be correct on this one, but I think he was released by Arsenal, came to Millwall, he's been at Mill for a long, long time. As I said, highly thought of, highly rated, played a big part in the under-18s cup run. The song get knocked out against Chelsea eventually at Stamford Bridge. Um, I think he's had, he's had some bad advice there from an agent or, or whoever, but... Um, why go to Portsmouth when allegedly, you know, as we know, Swansea come in with this disappointing so-called bid. It was nowhere near the mark of what we wanted. Now he's gone to Portsmouth. I think he's gone on a promise of, look, come here. If you do any work, if you do any good, then we'll give you a, give you a contract. So we'll get you straight in the first thing. That hasn't panned out. Now, this isn't to say that it isn't any good. This is probably to say that Millwall are in line for heavy compensation. Rumoured to be in the region of £1 million if Abdul Malik goes and signs for another team. So... I think Pulks have looked at him and thought, well, yeah, he's good, but he's not £1 million good. And uh, a League One team trying to just get out of that division at the minute and back into the championship, they're probably thinking we could do without investing in youth right now. Right here, right now, we could do with spending a million pounds on maybe someone who's going to get us out of League One, not someone for the future. So Abdul Malik has absolutely, in simple terms, fucked himself, basically. I don't know if the Mill contract offer still stands. Of course, it's still a one-year contract. So if he takes it, or if the club even, in fact, want him back, then Abdul Malik could play that one year 
and then go, no, you're right, thanks. Then leave for free anyway. I think Mill's hand is strong in this situation. And people said on the, on the socials, well, you know, we always let people go for cheap. This isn't down to us. This will go to tribunal. And I'm hearing it will be in the region of one million pound. And finally, for what was supposed to be a very brief roundup show, as I said, there's been no Den Dailies. That is mainly due to our business pretty much being done. And today, speaking to news at Den, Gary Rowett has confirmed that there's going to be no one else coming in unless... We can get players out. There is three players potentially that could go out. Jeb Wallace still will sign a contract. I don't think he's going anywhere. Even if he doesn't sign a new contract, which I'm sure he will. I can't guarantee that. I'm 75% sure he might. Um, then he'll leave at the end of next season on a free. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think they'll get it sorted with Jeb. Two players. John Daly Bavarsson has been made available for transfer. you just got to try and find someone that wants the fucker now. And of course, Portsmouth has expressed their interest and their admiration still for their previous loanee. Ben Thompson. So here's what I think personally could happen. John Daly Bavarsson, I, I don't, actually I don't know what could possibly fucking happen there. John Daly Bavarsson could go to a League One club and I think that when Ryan Ender becomes fit, fully fit, that could push Ben Thompson further out. I think you could see Thompson go to Portsmouth on a permanent. I did hear a, a rumour that John Daly Bavarsson was wanted by Charlton. That's a perfect fit. Anorak's all round. Um, and then I think at that point, you may then see us delve back in and get Liam Delap on loan from Manchester City. His dad, Rory, of course, ex long throw specialist, is close friends with Rowett. And the Manchester City striker is a hot prospect and wanted by an absolute plethora of championship clubs. But with Rowett's close relation to the family, it's a possibility we could still get the young striker. So that's your for this roundup show. I hope you have enjoyed it. I'll see you again shortly. Let's hope so for some more dealings in, out, sideways, whatever. I am going to do also some den debates. They'll be returned at some point, possibly next week. There's a launch video I'm going to go out for when the season starts. And I'm going to do exactly what I did last year. I'm going to do a squad assessment and my predictions for the season. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to Lions TV for fuck's sake. Come on, you Lions.